Morning, how's everybody doing, huh? It's Rutgers Management, it's gonna be good, you know that. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so thank you for the introduction, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm gonna jump right into uh, the PowerPoint slideshow and uh, we'll see, uh, see where it takes us. All right, there you go. There's a nice Batman reference for you. So riddle me this, what individual is the gatekeeper of information, guardian knowledge, keeper of the eternal flame and saves the universe IT? from utter chaos? <laughs> that is a question that I pose to you that hopefully by the end of the presentation, we shall know the answer. And anyone know who that is? Riddler, right? And did I, and I hear Gorshin? Did I hear somebody say Gorshin? Frank Gorshin, yeah, yeah. I'm old school, old school Batman. I'm not the new reiteration of it, so. <laughs> Just keep that in mind when you see some of these other pictures. All right, records manager at Rutgers University. That's me, Steve Delina, um, director. And let's start get thinking about quiz time. All righty. What is the percent of paper records still maintained used in a typo, typical office environment? OK, this is interactive. As Liz said, I'm a teacher. OK, I've been teaching for uh, since 2001, so I need some, I need some uh, hand raising and some, some guesses. 95%. Uh, get a little lower. 80%. 80%. Yeah, we're at 80% still on paper. And there's something I'm going to read to you here. Um, you know, we all love invoices. About 65% invoices, right, that, that come to you, digit, you know, in a digital form, people want to print out. So more than half of the digital stuff that you get, you're, pr you're printing out. Liz, it's records management. I gotta have sugar to keep you alive. And for answering that question, I have some candy. You want chocolate or a Jolly Rancher? Chocolate. <laughs> they usually say chocolate. There you go. Here's the Hershey's chocolate oh, for you. Okay. Right See, this is fun. Aren't you glad you came? Aren't you glad there's still more opportunities? Hold on. Okay, so, so what is the amount of time spent by an executive finding something that has been misfiled or saved electronically? How long? Three hours. Three hours. Well, okay, hold on. Let me st just... And how, now, <laughs> how long an executive? It's zero, right? Because the executive is now... No. So, but at, at three hours of, of somebody's time. Um, actually, I have two and a half hours. So, what do you want, chocolate? What do you, what do you, here. All right. Name a company or person involved in a shredding or information scandal. Come on, this side, they're kicking your butt. Let's go. What? Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney. What, and what did Dick Cheney do? He had a fire in his office. Uh, fire in his office. Cho chocolate or Jolly Rancher? Jolly Rancher. All righty. There we go. What, uh, one more from this side. Another scandal. Enron. Oh, my God. The, 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 the records. You want chocolate? So, for records managers, Enron is like the, is Mecca, okay? Because that really showed people can do devious things with information, and now there's great repercussions with that. Is this okay? The dark chocolate okay? Yeah. All righty, it's all good. All righty, this side, scandal, information, shredding. Records management could be so much fun. It is, yeah. It's, 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 she's getting a chocolate just for saying that. <laughs> see, it, uh, all right, you see how that works? Okay, so listen, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a child of the 80s, right, and all that other fun stuff. There was something called Iran Contra. All righty. Right, okay, so and, uh, I want to, I want to stick with Iran Contra. All righty, so Oliver North. Anyone know, remember, yeah, and, yeah. and what was Oliver North's secretary who actually shredded his stuff? Um, blonde Fawn hair. Uh, Fawn Hall, you want chocolate or Jolly Rancher? You can give my chocolate to uh, You want a piece of chocolate yeah, or Jolly? I gave up candy for one. <laughs> so, day after Easter, okay, you'll get it. All right, 
I think you, you kind of get the idea. There's bad things people do with information, OK? OK, name a FBI spy who gave Russians top secret info on a floppy disk. OK. Movie. No, it was a, a movie with Ryan Philippe. A movie called Breach. Ah, gosh, ah, sorry about that one. A guy named Robert Hansen, uh, FBI, uh, who just wasn't happy with his pay. So he decided to, at the time, it was a floppy disk, to start giving secrets. That got, that got many people killed. So again, you know, somebody taking information and doing something not so good with it. Who is Wen Ho Lee, and what did he do? Uh, Popular culture, let's go records management. <laughs> Do you want another piece of can? Actually, he didn't destroy it. Again, doing something bad with it. Uh, he was University of California working in Los Alamos, um, which is nuclear uh, bombs and all that stuff. And he actually walked out uh, at the end of the day with a hard drive full of bad, uh, good stuff and gave it to some bad people. So. Who or what was the Falcon and the Snowman? You see, this, this was a movie? It was a movie. Seminary student and his drug dealing buddy stole stuff for the rest. Nice, OK, again, you're people doing stuff. Dave, what do you want, chocolate Jolly Rancher? Chocolate. All right, I got one more, I think, one more Rutgers-related question. OK, what infamous? Rucker Scarlet Knight was one of the first hackers to be brought up on charges for e-disruption. And do you remember what, or ever hear of what the virus was? They worked for Rutgers University Foundation. It was the Melissa virus. A gentleman named David Smith, and he got sentenced to 10 years in prison for releasing a virus that disrupted um, information. Again, the first person ever brought up on e-disruption charges. So again, information, people doing bad things with it. All right. Okay. So people who have the sugar, they're not going to fall asleep. Okay. You know, so, you know, I have to talk about, you know, the definition, the systematic control of all records from the creation, receipt, through the processing, distribution, organization, maintenance, and retrieval to their ultimate disposition. That's records management. People creating, maintaining, and then ultimately, what do you do with it? It's called the life cycle of information. And of course, I'm using caps for emphasis. All records, right? So we're not just talking about paper. We're talking about electronic. Most interesting uh, record that I ever heard uh, one time I was uh, speaking with the records manager for uh, the White House, and he actually had a coconut that was a record because someone in Hawaii wrote the president at the time a uh, letter on a coconut and then mailed it to him. So that was an official record. All right, kind of the informal definition of records management, getting the right information to the right people at the right time at the lowest possible cost. Um, that's another, another um, uh, informal definition of it of records management. And then for me, you know, this is the basics, the value of, an, of, of, uh, of a record of information. This is as, as basic, as granular as you can get. Um, a record has these four values, administrative, legal, fiscal, and historical. It's going to have some sort of combination of it. And this is what drives how long you keep a record. So we all are creating stuff. We're all maintaining things, ultimately, the value will dictate how long you need to hold on to it. And then at the end of the presentation, we kind of get into what the, what, they, uh, what the culmination is, and that's a retention schedule. All right, a little bit of history. Rutgers founded 1766. Records management not on the founding father's mind. Uh, originally called Queens College. Eighth oldest academic institution in the US. So it started in 1766, but didn't graduate somebody until 1774. That's a long program. Thank God my son got out in five years, right? I still thank the Lord. And then look at that boon. Uh, I guess maybe admissions. They were having admissions, people paying for admissions, and people graduate, a lot of graduates then back then. 
1825 was renamed Rutgers College for somebody who only gave us a bell and no money. Uh, 1867, the first Targum was published, uh, and, and, and the Rutgers Targum is the, mo is the oldest continuous published a uh, academic newspaper in the world. I'll take that. 1869, first football game. And great moment in Rutgers history in 2007, a records management policy with those retention schedules were created. So let's look at Rutgers uh, currently. Some, some larger scale numbers that you see. And as these numbers unfold, just think about all the information. Think about all the records for each of those numbers and where they are and what we do with it. And then yes. Add all of that up and you get a big happy number one. Finally, your records manager with some staff to do something about it. All right, let's take a tour of how people store their records. This is the Rutgers University Annex, uh, Libraries Annex. Um, it's on Bush Campus. Uh, this was built more as a record center, but um, there is more and more books going in there than, uh, than boxes. Okay, records, records everywhere at College Avenue. Jim, uh, this is underneath the stands. This was a fun one. You know, obviously you see some just records there. I don't know if you can tell, but there's this glass cabinet that was in, uh, in at, at the back of it. And we needed to get all of these boxes out. And we're like, oh, look at this antique glass cabinet with these very old, unique looking records. Oh my gosh, we're gonna find the original charter in there. And this was, about the time, if you remember, Geraldo Rivera uh, was trying to get the Jimmy, uh, I mean, Al Capone. Al Capone safe, and you know, there was, he found nothing in it. So, you know, we were like, oh, we're going to find something in there. So we finally got all the boxes out. We got a drill. We had to drill in and open up the thing, and we opened up the, 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 uh, the books, and all they were were basketball game statistics. So, <laughs> there you go. All righty, keeping with the athletic theme, here's uh, the rack. Uh, again, underneath the stands, they like to store, the, store their records. Um, every couple years, I'd have to go back and, and clean, out, uh, clean out their stuff. Again, people producing records, and what do they do? They just store it underneath the stands. Uh, this was quite some time ago. These are uh, university HR records, a vital record, a record that uh, the university needs to keep for 65 years. Um, just in the old uh, Kilmer barracks. And everything you see so far has been boxed up nice and now in, this is in our facility. So, you know, it's all good. This was my old office. And, you know, that was my cubicle <laughs> hidden behind those boxes <laughs> just in case the nuke got dropped. You know, I was going to, you know, be able to stay there and eat paper until the radioactive material would go away. This is a good one too. I've, I don't know if you can see, there's actually, you can see the license plate. People storing records in a parking garage. Okay. Uh, the one on the bottom is uh, New Jersey Hall, Douglas campus. And the stuff on the right are all uh, videos of uh, Rutgers uh, football games. Obviously all the losses too. Okay, so self-storage unit too. So after the integration, we started finding some more records. Uh, this is a self-storage unit down uh, South Jersey, Black Horse Pike. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you can see the top right. What's, what's on top of the, uh, what's on the record? Mold. mold. Oh, I heard a lot of mold, so guess what? <laughs> I, and, and again, it's this side I was hearing, so you know. <laughs> Take one, pass one around. Um, so self-storage unit. It just so happened the unit next to this one, a guy got, was uh, in the midst of a divorce and got kicked out of his house with his belongings. So he decided to put all of his belongings in the self-storage unit and also decided to live in it. Um, he was, he uh, was trying to cook some beans or whatever, started a fire. And uh, when the fire started, the police, uh, the fire department came and then they put everything out. And every, of course, water, you know, the, the force of the water went over, through, and whatever, onto all of these medical records, eventually causing um, uh, mold. But again, 
What the hell are you storing records in a self medical records in a self storage unit? Please. All righty. Keeping with the theme of med uh, dental records as well as wetness. Uh, you'll see uh, on January 1st, uh, uh, second of this year, uh, a, um, a dental clinic down in South Jersey was uh, likes to store their records uh, in the basement. And I guess the sump pump didn't work while they were out for the, uh, the week. And all of these records, all of these records got wet. So who do they call? Records management. We got wet records. What are we going to do? Oops. So we made a couple of trips. We brought them up to our facility. And um, legally, we're not allowed to destroy those, right? There's a retention for medical records. These were all current patients. So what we had to do was dry them out and then get a list of every single name. And then ultimately, we shredded it and destroyed it. So here's, um, so that was South Jersey. Let's go up to North Jersey. Uh, this is a, a 4-H camp that Rutgers owns up, up in North Jersey. Hey, did I, did I say the candy can jump to the... <laughs> That's all good. That's all good. 4-H for, uh, for uh, summer camp uh, that's run by Rutgers. There's Ruck Rutgers records up there. Uh, you can see uh, some animals decided to make a nest in some of the records as well. So this is just some of the stuff that we, we deal with on a, on a constant basis. Um, you know, stuff in closets all over the place. These are all medical records next to, next to nuclear waste, bi bio waste. So again, this is just stuff, people accumulating their Rutgers, uh, records at Rutgers. Okay, more dental records. What's that guy's name? Hermie. Hermie, yeah, you're all sugared up. You should know this by now, Hermie. So these are pathology records, okay, that we now uh, um, store at our record center. Again, stuff stowed away all over the place. All right, let's have some fun. So here's some non-records. Glassware, condoms, and candy. OK, that's a party waiting to happen. Just in time for St. Patrick's Day, here's all your. So Legacy UMDMJ did very good at records management, but sometimes they would send some stuff off site to a record storage company and they pay for that, uh, they were storing boxes of nothing. There was empty, empty boxes being stored there, being paid. Um, you know, here's somebody decided to store their holiday. holiday stuff. We have Christmas as well, you know, equal opportunity. But yeah, glassware, condoms, and candy. That's, that's a party pack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, and, you know, so, you know, here's the deal. Everyone thinks they need stuff. Oh, I need to hold on to it because you never know. I need, I need, I need. You know, again, just out of sight, out of mind. And, and, and again, you know, not to, you know, throw people under the bus regarding paper. It's the same thing with electronic records. Where does it go? What do I do? I just need, I need to hold on to it, right? I need, I need, I need. <coughs> so one of the themes I always like to um, say, well, re what records management does is that I'm the sandman. I let you sleep at night, OK? You can get rid of stuff. There is retention schedules out there that tell you what you can keep and then what you can get rid of. And that kind of brings me to the profession itself and, and kind of what I do. Again, I started out when I was in the state. I've been with Rutgers since 1994. Um, and, and it's records management is kind of an inter interesting uh, profession. Uh, it's always funny during the summer season when I'm having a, uh, you know, a picnic and Uncle Bob comes and says, well, what are you doing these days, Steve? And I say, well, you know, I'm, I'm still doing records at, at, at Rutgers. And, you know, you could just see the glazed look and then the drool start coming down. My wife, when she's out with her friends, and they say, well, what does your husband do? She just lies. OK, she doesn't even tell him what records meant. But it's, it's, it's really important. And I'm very, I'm very, very serious about records management, very passionate about records management. And, and, and it's really important. I, I take it very seriously that 
this stuff, people can start doing bad things with this. Bad things can happen when you have stuff like this. And the continuation of, of, of this, here's, here's the Zimmerly, um, uh, New Jersey Hall. There was, there used to be, a, that used to be the um, college uh, uh, swimming pool. Now they store records on there. And Newark, yeah. Oh, this is one of my favorites, my friends. One of my favorites. Um, the Douglas Dean's house, Douglas Campus, Nickel Avenue. And, and this was probably late 90s. And um, I was sent down to the basement to clean it up. And you can see they had some records there stored next to the, you know, for that cold, cold winter night. And then again, you can see, you know, some stuff. And what's that black stuff? Mold, OK. So again, good records getting destroyed over time. But this, my friends, this, my friends, it was not water that made those uh, records moldy. The dean had a lot of cats. And they made, they made tinkles on a lot of the records. <laughs> Liz, it more than stunk. And I always go back. You know, we, we, you do triage, right? You, you, you go in, you see some stuff, and you got to do something with it. So you start cleaning it up. But we left this garbage bag for last. And we finally got everything all, you know, kind of cleaned up. I said, well, let's look in this bag. And I, of course, I had my, my underling open it first because I was afraid. <laughs> Hey, what, you know, what privilege, you know, rank comes privilege. So she opens it up, and then she closes it. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about cat's curiosity. You know, I got to open up this bag. I open it up, and then I just close it. All I saw were colors. It was just colors. I don't know. To this day, I still don't know what it was. It could have been a dead cat. Uh, it could have been, you know, urine-soaked records that have just fermented. How's that for, does it get your stomach going? But again, it's records, information destroyed over time. So that was in the late 90s, and you, I cleaned it out. And again, you make space, people start putting stuff again. This was like four years later, they started again. So it's that perpetual, I need to hold on to stuff. Uh, this is the Douglas Dean's house. A residence on, on Nickel Avenue, the one that's supposedly haunted. We all know that story? Yeah, haunted by the dead cat that you found. Uh, <laughs> actually, the, the Hall Mills trial? Yeah, yeah, the, oh, yeah, yes, that was scary. That, my, the hairs on my neck are going up on that one. All right, so here's equal opportunity destruction. Here's some nice backup tapes. This was, uh, again, the warehouses the old barracks on, on Kilmer, um, you know, and this was the type of building that you needed to, when you open up the door, you need to go like this. Not, yeah, not to say, hey, I'm here. It's like, you know, for all those little critters to go away. And I don't think you can see that. What, what does that look like? What, all righty. So, so me, it is, right, so for me, in second grade, uh, Sister Teresa forced me to learn uh, Trees by Joyce Kilmer. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree, okay? It was this beautiful poem about this tree. The tree it was actually on Cook campus, and in 1964, it died. So what they did is they chopped it up, and they said, well, let's just store it next to these records. So right next to University Records is, you know, was the Kilmer the Kilmer tree. So, yeah, good stuff. For those of you watching on thing, we're talking about Norman, the wood shop guy, okay? <laughs> Norman. We would go into that warehouse and we would get wood from there and make plaques, special plaques, mm -hmm. to commemorate whatever. I also, there was also Christmas orna ornaments were made of it, as well as walking canes as well. So, 
being put to good use, ladies and gentlemen. A rich, you know. yeah. So, all right. So when I came to Rutgers in in '92, um, it was said, they said, well, Steve, you spent some time uh, down in the state archives doing records management. Actually, also a little bit more about myself. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you're going to like this one. Uh, okay, so. My, my father's a records manager. He's the, he was the first records manager for Middlesex County. My brother is currently the records manager for Middlesex County. So, I mean, you should be at our house during Thanksgiving about that. We talk about stimulating conversation, okay? That, that wasn't supposed to be funny. Um, you know, some, some families, you know, they, they breed athletes or, or clergy. We breed <laughs> records managers. I don't know what was in the water in the old country in our, you know, but you know, there you go. So anyhow, so here I am at Rutgers, and they said, Steve, we have all this stuff all over the place, and, you know, here's the mantra that was bestowed to me. We need space, okay? There's too many records all over the place. Taking up space, what do we do? All right. So for me, the goal is at Rutgers. Create a records management empire, all righty? And that starts with the records management committee. I can't just do it myself, all righty? I need some accountability. So the president uh, got, at the time, Leslie Fehrenbach, uh, who was the secretary of the university, uh, to create a committee, a records management committee. So I go back to those values, right, those original values. So you want people who represent the values member administrative, legal, fiscal, historical. So who do I want on that committee? I want, I want a, somebody from legal, risk management, uh, internal audit, uh, IT, uh, uh, archives. So we got a committee together uh, to start getting a policy and then retention schedules. So ultimately, that was part of the, uh, the goals. Uh, deal with electronic records as well get invited to the table, but ultimately for records management, which, uh, you know, I was given uh, candy away, you know, where, where were you before? <laughs> you were part of one of, one of, my, uh, one of my trivia questions. How, lo how long does it take you to find something that's lost on your PC or in, in a filing cabinet? Depends how long it takes IT to get there. Yeah. <laughs> for both. <laughs> All right, so the, for me, that was the goals. <clears throat> Ultimately, we created the schedule, as I mentioned, a highlight in the uh, timeline of the history of Rutgers. We created the schedule. And how do you create the, the policy and the schedules? Obviously, you want to see what you're doing internally. You want to measure yourself up to other universities. The state of New Jersey has a very good retention schedule uh, that we emulated and obviously laws out there that dictate what you should be keeping and what you should be getting rid of. The biggest, the biggest thing that got Rutgers uh, um, uh, moving forward for records management was something called OPRA, the Open Public Records Act. Uh, that was pretty much the uh, genesis that got records management here at Rutgers University. There's our policy, and that was always fun, creating a policy. You know, they don't teach you creating policy in, in, in kindergarten or elementary school or even graduate school. So that, that was kind of fun to create. And now the results. Well, that mantra, you know, we need space, we did have space created. Uh, web page, the retention schedules. Again, the Sandman coming in saying, hey, you can get rid of this stuff. It's all good. Um, we do microfilming and scanning projects. The word of mouth regarding records management, hey, there's some good stuff going on over there. Ultimately, control. That was very, very important, is control over all you know, university-wide records. We all need to be legitimate, provide a service to university. Um, the integration in 2013 was, was huge for records management at Rutgers. As I mentioned, legacy UMDMJ had pretty good records management. And um, you know the combination of the two was 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 very good synergy. Uh, upper administrative support. Tony's here, right? He didn't need to be here. Now he's supporting records management by being here. It's all good. The floodgates are open. They are open. They opened in 2013, actually, when we integrated. So for me, 
languishing 18 years in the basement of Alexander Library. All right. My office had no windows, and that was even before internet, so you couldn't even go on and see what the weather was. You'd come in in the morning, and it was nice, and you'd go outside, and you know, it, there was snow there. Languishing in, in the basement of Alexander Library, in 2013, came on board with the old APS, now IPO. Uh, new building, new administration, obviously a new attitude. Records management is real. So the university purchased a building, 7 Kilmer Road, not just a stone's throw from here, uh, s specifically for record storage. And, and I'm gonna, you know, I've been here long enough that I can, I can say this, that this was, was done right. It was done on Rutgers-like. It was done right, okay? I mean, it was just beautiful. A committee, um, I, I, I can't emphasize enough that this is a state-of-the-art facility. And I know some of you have been there and you can vouch for that. But let's look at some, some pictures. That's about 21 feet high. Frank, when you fell off that building, how far did you fall off? 31, 31 feet. Frank fell <laughs> off of a building that high. And he's here to talk about it, so it's all good, Frank. So this is the Rutgers University Records Center. And I offer a tour anytime anyone's interested. Everything is barcoded. Everything is uniform. We're very anal, OK? This is the way it should be. So think about all those pictures you saw before of all those records stored in basements, in attics, in closets, all over the place, storage units. Now everything is centralized. Everything is clean. Here's Dave Kim's records, facilities, maps, x-rays. As I mentioned, records management are all records. No coconuts, no coconuts. But we have a lot of different types of records. Dental molds of people's mouths, videos, pediatric cardiograms, uh, patent records, president's records, student records, legal records, you name it and we have it. The old Scarlet Knight, we have that as well. Actually, that, that's the father of the current Scarlet Knight. That's the grandfather. <laughs> we do backup tapes. We currently do backup uh, rotational tapes for uh, university departments. And for us, how can we help? How can records management help you? We provide the space, the compliance, security, and access. The philosophy, again, you know, I always, you know, I was saying before, how, um, uh, you know, I'm the Sandman, I let you sleep at night, you can get rid of stuff. Well, we are an extension of your office. We are here to help you. We are here to make you look good. When somebody comes into your office and says, I need something, you can go into our system, find it, and then we will deliver it to you. We have an online records management system like Amazon, you put some stuff in there, you have a cart, I like this, I don't like this, except we don't badger you. Hey, I know you looked at shoes yesterday, you know, here's some things to look at. <clears throat> what do we do? We provide you boxes and barcode labels. We will pick up those records, we will store those records. If you need something back, you can go into the system to request something. You can request the entire box, you can request a file. And there's an electronic component to it. You can create a virtual box and put your electronic documents into there. Um, for stuff that th that's there on paper that you want back and you don't, you don't want the paper back, we will scan it. It's something called scan on demand. There's this philosophy, oh, we need to scan everything. We need to scan. Why are you spending the time and the effort and the money to scan something that you can destroy in five years that you'll never use? Easier, cheaper, put it in a box, put it in storage, and then we will uh, send it back to you uh, um, uh, electronically. And again, going back to the, that life cycle, what do you do with the records when you're done? Well, we'll shred it. We get into that in a little bit. How are we doing on time, Liz? Uh, you're good, 10.35. Oh, perfecto. 
How we do, you know, how we, doing on how we doing, let's go, chocolate again. I see Tony looking at that bag of chocolate over here, and we'll do the Jolly Ranchers too. Okay, I'm, 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 we're, we're getting close here. So what else do we do? We will come on site, all of those stuff, uh, stuff that you see languishing, we will come, we will come, we will box it up, we will do inventory for you. And then ultimately retention, how long do I keep it? That is the number one question I get, how long do I keep something? Go to the website, records management website, we'll take a look at it. Um, there are retention schedules there. Retention schedules will tell you how long you need to keep something. If you don't feel like looking and you want to just chat with me, you're looking for some candy, give me a call, come on over, you know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how long you're supposed to keep the stuff. And then ultimately that life cycle. So we, we shred and, and, and securely shred all of our records internally, but we also do the shredding for the entire university as well. So you might see some bins throughout uh, uh, the buildings. We take care of that. Stuff gets picked up and brought to us. Everything is barcoded, everything's scanned, securely shred. Goes in the chute, into the teeth, and then out to a compactor. Ultimately, filling up the compactor, and then off it goes. And then the life cycle is over. So let's celebrate, my friends. This is always a great article. Uh, last time, I guess in November uh, 2009, Yankees won the uh, World Series. Uh, eager fans, you know, the Canyon of Heroes, decided, listen, I'm not throwing the shredded stuff off. I'm throwing off real paper. So payroll records being thrown out the window. So I'm dreaming, my friends, that the Canyon of Heroes, one day, Rutgers is going to win that national championship, and we will be ready. Okay, that compactor will be yours to throw stuff and bestow great things. It won't be Coach Ash, but you know it'll be somebody else down the road, perhaps. Alrighty, answer to that riddle. Remember that first slide. Who saves the university from utter chaos? Well, it's that records management guy. So that's Frank Gorshin the Riddler, and that's me quite some time ago. So that's it. That's my presentation. Any questions, comments, concerns? So we'll start in back there. How large is my staff? Uh, you, ha you see one quarter of it standing before you. I have three other full-timers. Uh, I also um, have some part-time uh, student workers, but I also work with, uh, I call them my cousins, okay? I work with mail services, represented by Frank in the back there, and also material services as well. So a lot of the deliveries, uh, a lot of the box pickups, uh, we, I work in, in conjunction with mail services and material services. about 95 percent. We store about 145,000 of these, 145,000 boxes of university records. Um, we normally get about 1,000 boxes a month, but we destroy about 1,000 boxes a month. So we're, 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 we're okay, we're okay. Um, you know, when 95, 90 percent is not critical. And what did I say about that building being done right? We can actually uh, expand. We have room for expansion. It's, it's all in place for it. So we're, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. With a virtual box, does it have to be full and scan it? Like, so say it's every no. year ending, you have documents. So electronic documents? Yeah. Yes. It's, it's a virtual box. It's uh -huh. created electronically. And all you need to do is take it and upload, continually upload those documents into that box. But that box, remember, has a retention schedule. And this goes back to those retention schedules. Every single box that comes into our facility is on the clock, right? Mm -hmm. if, if we know it's the president's records, uh, we know it's permanent. But if we designate that as financial or accounting records, it's on the clock to be destroyed. So when you're putting digital 
files into a virtual box. Just remember, when, when the clock is up, stuff in there gets deleted. So have, um, items or documents that have different that is correct. It's, it's best to separate by retention. Uh, but again, we just don't get rid of stuff. You get notification of it. I know this is on the record, but what are your feelings about cloud storage, cloud technology? Uh, it's the Wild West for records management. It, 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 it worries me a little bit. Again, that mentality of out of sight, out of mind. You, you saw it with, with paper, right? You saw it with paper. You, the, the pictures are there. Basements, attics. It goes there, but who's monitoring that? Okay, and that, that's what worries me. Um, the the, the um, protection of it, I'm okay with. I'm okay with the protection of it, but however, when you send something to the cloud, uh, you know, I need IT to identify that that should be pulled or deleted from the cloud at some point. That's not always the case. Um, you know, records management software is, was built, with, it's built to be on a retention and to get rid of it when you're supposed to get rid of it. The cloud to me is just another attic, it's just another basement. It goes there and it's going to languish. And again, you know, when you get in trouble and somebody needs something, if you have it, you got to find it. It's, it's a haystack. How do you find that needle? How do you like that records manager one? That's a good one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, concerns? All right. Any OPA requests? Uh, yes, yes we do. Yes, OPA requests, legal requests. And this, I work very closely with Office of Ethics and Compliance as well. Uh, in fact, I have a one o'clock meeting. There is this thing called GDPR uh, in Europe. It's something called the right to be forgotten uh, that you can go and you can tell a company who has your information, you know, you're not allowed to hold my information. Um, so, so I work a lot with uh, ethics and compliance. Uh, and, and those retention schedules, the policy, the consistency, that's really, you know, on the legal side, that's, that's really, really important. Okay. With that being said, open invite, 7 Kilmer, all righty? You saw it, you want to go there, I'll have candy ready. <laughs> My friends, I, I, I cannot thank you enough for coming out this morning. Um, I was only expecting just a handful, but to see such a, a, a see, you know, for the people on, on, watching the stream and for the thousands of people that are here. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much. <laughs> Records management, it's a religion. Buy into it, baby. All good, thank you.